Uh, IRC is, is uh, similar in that it's more like the sort of basic connected protocol example that I showed earlier in the talk. Uh, of course, you'll need to know where the IRC protocol object is. Uh, you will want to, instead of implementing data received, you want to respond to IRC events. So you need to look at the IRC API docs to figure out what they are. Um, and you will need to connect as a client instead of listen as a server. Um, so that means connect to TCP, not listen to TCP. This is a more or less complete IRC client. The important bits you want to note are, like I said, twisted words, protocols, IRC, uh, dot IRC client, out there. Um, then uh, you'll need to make one that has a nickname and password. Uh, those are some methods that would be helpful to implement. And uh, then you need to set up the reactor and call reactor.run as uh, the earlier example explained. So this is almost a solution to the lab, so I'm not going to leave this up for long enough for everybody to count it down. But this is more or less at least that should be used in jumping off points for what you Then for the web side of things, uh, web is a little bit different. You're integrating code into a different point in the server than just making a uh, protocol factory. We're going to just use, for the purposes of this lab, a built-in twisted web server, the actual same command line one I explained earlier, and a resource script, which is a twisted specific concept. Um, it's sort of like WSGI, but from like 2002 and totally specific to twisted. Um, the, uh, instead of creating a object which is a server or client connection, a protocol, we're creating a resource object, which is a web specific object. IRC servers are broken down into channels and users, uh, but web servers are broken down into resources, which are things that are identified by URLs. So, to get started with the web thing, you first want to run twisty-n web, uh, probably one dash dash port in there, unless you're root and don't be root. Uh, and then you want a directory called stuff, where you're going to put your resource script. This is an example of resource script. Um, this uh, resources are pretty simple. Uh, you import, import twisted.web.resource.resource. Um, and then you implement methods that have to do with HTTP methods. So render get and render post would handle get methods and post methods, respectively. Um, the, uh, in the second example here, you can see in the render post method, there's a request.args attribute, which is where the form components will go after being parsed. So that's where you can get your arguments if you have an HTML form. Um, the bottom line is really important there. This is an RPY, not a PY, which means that it must have a variable in the resource found as a global scope, because that is what, when you go to uh, in this example, if your file is my-lab.rpy, if you go to your servers slash my-lab.rpy, that object is what is going to be rendered there. So um, make sure that you instantiate whatever resource you create and assign it to the game resource, lowercase. That's very specific and special. Um, also, that cache call at the top, I'll talk about a little more unless it's not being imported for anywhere. Uh, so that's important to integration. So integration tips for the IRC group. Uh, you will probably, in your initial testing, to get something working, you'll be just running the reactor yourself. Um, but later you, oops, that sentence is not complete. Later you will want to run in the context of the already running web server, which the web group has, will be providing for you. Um, that's, if you can remember the stuff I was saying about running the reactor earlier on, don't make it integral to your code, don't run a function that runs the reactor at the end, make sure it's separate, you should be fine. Um, and as far as the web group is concerned, that call to cache is important because if you want the same resource object to come back, like the same exact Python object that like remembers all of the state you put into it before, you need to call cache right at the top of your RPY. That function is a special thing that's built into RPYs. Um, that says stop execution here and just give me back whatever this script returned the last time. So that's about it.
Yeah, it's overwhelming. 